so many things to do. Uh, there's a couple of things which I wanted to do. Get a slice of pie, which is what, well, you know, pizza pie, you call it pie over here. Um, get a slice of pie, which we did last night. You know, massive, giant slice, thin slice. We don't have that back home. Uh, so I've ticked that off. But the other thing I want to do is I want to go for a run through Central Park. I've been trying to keep fit since I've been on tour. And I thought I'd rather just, that, that was the, my first experience of Central Park was to actually put on some running shoes and go for a jog. <laughs> so I'm going to do that later on. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, Fast Crew, we were together for the best part of 10 years. It was, um, yeah, it was a hip-hop group we had back home. And um, I guess as a youngster, I just, you know, I started writing all different kinds of music at an early age. And, you know, I was playing rock bands. I was playing in, um, I played the drums in a church band. Uh, I was kind of, I played the euphonium at, in the school band. Um, so I was kind of all over the show. And then I just fell in love with hip-hop music. You know, as a lot of kids my age at the time did. And uh, I became very, very passionate about it, embraced the entire culture, was break dancing, was, you know, was right into it on every kind of level. And uh, we started freestyling, we started doing that kind of stuff at parties. And uh, my ability to kind of construct songs sort of took over, and I ended up, you know, forcing the other boys to like sit down and try and formulate these songs with me. Um, and then yeah, one thing led to another, and we had it. We had a brilliant run. We had an amazing run. Uh, managed to tour Australia and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it was. A, I mean, it was a, a great ten years. It turned south to pretty south at the end there, but um, it was good. It was good. I had I had always um, wanted to release a solo record. It was something that was it was always on my mind, and all through the, through those years, people would always say, "Man, you should do your own thing." Da 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 da. So I actually during those years when uh, Jeremy, the old produ producer, left, I kind of was thrown in the deep end at, on the producer level. So I was, you know, self teaching myself how to make beats and and uh, basically pick up the pieces to finish our second album. Um, and then uh, I guess that process there was kind of a blessing in disguise and um i tried to yeah no this is this is what happened i actually tried to write a hip-hop record so i started writing solo hip-hop material but i couldn't write anything that i was ever happy with or ever like i didn't show anybody any of the stuff because i didn't think it was good enough and i kind of got to the point where i just really really fell out of love with writing hip-hop music and uh, I was actually going to throw in the towel and, and give up music altogether um, but you know if you're a writer or if you're creative it's something that's always ingrained in you something that you can't shake um, and so I found myself picking up the acoustic guitar and approaching songwriting in a different way and formulating these pop songs which is something so far from what I was used to um, but it felt really natural to me for some reason and you know, I could start to talk on topics of love and all that kind of stuff, which if you're in a hip hop crew, you that's like you don't do that. You there's no way you do that. Um so for me it was kind of a, a, a release and, and, and it was just me growing up and, and wanting to do something different, I guess. Well I uh, back in the day I'd you know, I'd learned how to play the trombone and the euphonium for the school band. Um I was always very percussive so I could play drums. Um guitar, you know, I knew I still know the basics. Uh, um, you know, Mum taught me C, G, D, E minor, A minor, F on the guitar when we were kids, um, and I guess I never forgot that. And so I basically just used that to to start writing music, to start writing these songs. And I ended up writing a lot of the like the keys parts and a lot of the bass lines and stuff on the the album, having no knowledge of what I was doing. I basically did the whole thing by ear. You know, I'd sit there on the keyboard and be like, <laughs> okay, that feels about right. And add that, and that's, okay, there we go. And then I, I, that was pretty much how I wrote the whole thing, <laughs> which is kind of strange, but um, it, it worked for me, you know, and, and uh, I really enjoyed having full creative control over it, and being able to do exactly what I wanted to do, um, even though it was, you know, quite a, a lengthy process um, and a stressful process, I, I managed to pull it off. Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, the, the the whole process was so backward, and I'll tell you why. I Always Be Here was the first single I released in New Zealand. It was the first song I actually finished. So I had like a, I started a few, I had maybe four or five on the go, and I didn't really, wasn't really feeling any of them, but Always Be Here uh, was the first song I actually finished, and I was like, oh, okay, I think we might have something here. 
and uh, took it up to a friend of mine was um, uh, he's head of Warner's now. I took it up to him and he said, "Oh, this is pretty cool. Why don't we release it?" Um, and so we did, and uh, and it blew up. And then I was like, "Holy hell! What do I do now? I don't have any other material. People wanting to book me for shows, um, and I only had one song. <laughs> so then, uh, so then I just went into overdrive, and I I wrote the second song that I wrote was "Don't Know What to Do," and then we released that as a single, and uh, and that did well. And then then there was this enormous pressure to write an album, so it all kind of I've just been playing catch up ever since I wrote that first song, pretty much. So, yeah." 